Before continuing on, let me see if I can elaborate or demonstrate or show the depth buffer a little bit more. The red triangle is behind the blue triangle. Remember, the smaller the value, the closer it is to the camera or to our face or how much it shows up in the screen here. Recall that the range is negative 1 to 1, just like with the x and the y. We're interested in negative 1 to 1. I'm actually going to turn off the blue triangle for a minute and demonstrate that, yes, negative 1 to 1 is the range for the depth test. So let's change this and say, hey, only render three vertices. And the vertices we'll render are just the red ones because they're the 0, 1, and 2. 0, 1, and 2 on our list. That's from previous videos. Let me run this, and we shall see only the red triangle renders. Okay, I'm going to push the red triangle as far back into the scene as possible, as far away from us as possible. And that value will be 1. When I do that and I hit Control F5, what do you think will happen? I strongly encourage you to pause the video and think about it. Let me run this. And you see that our red triangle is gone. Remember, when we clear the depth buffer, we clear all those values to 1. And it just so happens that means every vertex in the red triangle fails the depth test because our red triangle Z is 1, and all the fragments will be 1, and 1 is the value in the depth buffer, so all the fragments fail. Let's see if we can just bring it out a little ways from that far back plane, but still pretty far back. Well, let's just add one more 9 for fun. Control F5 on this, and you'll see that, hey, a Z value of 0.999 for all these fragments, that passes all the depth tests our red triangle is back. Even though we can't physically see this triangle as far away from the camera, it is. It is as far away from us as possible. Now let's flip it around and bring that triangle as close as we can to the camera. I want it right in front of the camera's face. And let's go back here. I'm going to say, hey, negative 1. Okay, negative 1 is less than 1, which will be the value in the depth test. Let's run this. And we see that our red triangle still renders. You can't see it, but the red triangle is as close to our face as possible. Let's move it just a little bit closer by saying negative 1.01. We're just breaking the edge there of that negative 1 to 1 range that we're interested in. What do you think will happen? Pause the video. Think about it. Let me run this. And the red triangle's gone. OpenGL says, whoa, whoa, this triangle is behind the camera. All right, the value here of negative 1.01, that's behind the camera. I'm not going to render it. So sad, too bad. Okay, let's do one other kind of cool test. I'm going to take this back to a positive 0.5. Let's bring the blue triangle back in here. Let's run this just to make sure everything looks kosher. It does. The blue triangle is on top of the red triangle because the blue triangle has less depth than the red triangle. Looking at our scene again, I am going to go to the vertex at the top of the red triangle here. Okay, remember, there's a vertex up here. And I'm going to move it in front of the blue triangle. Any idea what ha will happen? I'm going to take this vertex and move it to a negative 1, which is as close to the camera as we can get. What will happen? Pause the video, think about it. Let's see, that top vertex, I believe is right here, 0 in the x, 1 in the y. Let's manually change this one little vertex to negative 1. Get right in the camera's face. But the rest of them will be back behind the blue triangle still. Build this, run this, and voila. Now, if what happened is not what you expected, I encourage you to pause the video and think about what's going on here. Question it before I explain it to you, but let me explain it to you. <laughs> The Z value of this vertex right here is right in front of the camera. Right? Yet these Z values are still at negative, or no, 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 the positive 0.5. They're 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This is negative 1. All right, these blue ones, let's label the blue ones here. All the blue ones are at 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Uh, 0.5 and 0.5. Oh, forgive me, it's negative 0.5. Duh. Negative 0.5, negative 0.5. That means all of the blue fragments 
since none of the vertices differentiate from z values, all the blue fragments are at negative 0.5. But what we're seeing here with the red triangle is this top fragment right there, that tippy top fragment right there. Its value is negative 1, very close to the camera. But as we move down, its z value becomes larger and larger. Or in another way to think of it, it's going further and further into the scene, back and back and back and back. And then all of a sudden, right here at this sweet spot, the z value of the red fragments go larger than the z value of the blue fragments. Okay, it's almost like this red triangle is poking up in through the blue triangle. It literally is, as far as the three dimensions are concerned. The red triangle is poking up through the blue triangle, and right here is where it cuts into the blue triangle on the z-axis. And then everything from here on down, all of the red fragments lose out to the blue fragments because they have a less z-value. Now I can illustrate this a little bit better. It's hard to see it with these flat red and blue colors. What I'm going to do is take this blue vertex and move it over here to the center so we'll get a triangle like so, so we can see more of the red triangle. Let's first do that. Where's that blue vertex hanging out? It's negative 1, positive 1. So let's set this at 0. Build this, run this, and just make sure the results are what I'm expecting. Very good. Very good. We The blue triangle takes up half of the, roughly half-ish of the screen. I guess it's really a fourth of the screen. But And then I'm going to, let me bring that back up. I'm going to change the color of this top red vertex. I'm going to change it to blue. Okay, how will that affect the scene if I change this vertex to blue? Ooh, that's a lot bigger than I wanted it to be. Pause the video and think about it. Let me go find that vertex and change it to blue. No red for you, only blue. Control F5, and voila. All right, we see, I mean, I'll make this big. Let's get it right in the view for you. We see that top vertex is blue. In fact, it's hard to differentiate the triangle fragments from the red triangle fragments from the blue triangle fragments because these are very blue. But as we move down, the interpolation or the blending of the colors moves more and more to red. We still have a lot of blue. In fact, we have more blue than we have red, more blue than we have red, more blue than we have red, and then we hit this spot and red starts to win. Okay, right here on the bottom of this triangle, red starts to win. The interpolation or the blending of the colors takes on a more reddish tone until we get all the way down to here, and it's extremely red down there. Well, what does that have to do with positions? Well, remember when we output our color from the vertex shader to the fragment shader, I told you that the hardware does some interpolation, and I showed that to you with that quote-unquote pretty triangle, that red-green-blue triangle in previous videos. Well, we're seeing the interpolation of the colors again, but that also allows us to imagine or to kind of see the interpolation of the z values. The z values of the red triangle are closer to the viewer. They're still closer, but they're getting further and further away as I go down. And you can see that correlate with the colors changing from blue to red. And then right here is where we cross the sweet spot, not only in the z, meaning the blue triangle wins out, but also in the color that these two vertices, these two red vertices, the one right here and the one right here, win out over the blue and we start to see more red. Okay, now, one thing that threw me off when I threw this demo together, I was expecting the sweet spot to be down here, but then I realized, you know what, I have one little blue vertex in the red triangle, one little blue vertex fighting two red vertices. And so as the interpolation goes down, we have one to two, which means we have one third, and this is a third of a triangle, so that makes sense. This little guy is overpowered by the two red vertices. Whew, that was a lot of videos on depth buffers <laughs> and how the depth buffer works. But I could always imagine and see these things in my head, but not until you actually do some little exercises and, and see it physically does it make sense. And so I hope you understand better the, the, the depth buffer or the Z buffer as it's sometimes called. We use it to figure out which triangles are on top of the other triangles. They're two-dimensional arrays of single numbers of depth, and they work directly with the color buffer. Anyway, moving on, we we got to get to doing some 3D.